and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 252. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. Hey there, Twy. How are you doing? I'm alright. Yourself, Norman? I'm nervous. Ah, uh, you shouldn't be nervous. You've been at this long enough. Yeah, true. I mean, nervous and excited. I think Pinky calls nervous excited, was it? Yeah, nervous excited. Making up words in true Pinky fashion. Yep, yep, yep. And you know what? Also joining us today is, well, he doesn't really pop in here a lot, but when he does, it's always special. Silver Quill. Oh, so special, yes. I think we'll have to go to DEF CON 4 on this one. Uh, yeah. Probably five. Yeah. You're making this sound very awkward. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm going to get me some <laughs> DEF CON 4, if you know what I mean. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, in all honesty... <clears throat> I want to say to everyone who is hearing this right now, thank you for listening to us for five years now. Like, today marks the fifth anniversary of the show um, on this day we recorded. And, well, it's been five years of podcasting. And I think I've only missed a few times due to conventions or my voice being destroyed. But yeah, we've been doing this show for five years now. And within that five years, I've met a lot of awesome, awesome people. And some bozos. Like me. Nah, you're one of the nicest guys I've met around. Oh, you met some we... drunks like me? <laughs> no, you're, you're cool. Norman, I, I truly believe we need to get you to meet more people if I'm one of the nicest people you've met. Huh. <laughs> this is what I have to do. Uh, but still, but still. Uh, this show has been around for five years now, and I'm surprised that I have the dedication to pull this off for five years. Even a show that I was inspired by, um, the Bronyville podcast, they ended on 208. And I've been going on for this time around now. You guys remember a station called Everfree Network? Yeah. Heard of it. Yeah. Well... They were around back then. I think they were one of the first radio or pony radio stations out there. And I've always dreamt of being there. But now, they're shut down. And you're still going. I know. What does that say? No one stands taller than the last man standing. True that. I do remember there's another podcast, um, Brony related, called The Brony Show, was it? I think they're on the same league as us. 252, I think they're on. Is it now? Let me double check. Not 100% sure. But they've been on a long time too. And yeah, Brony content is, wow, one of those things where we can talk so much about it. Plenty of news to keep us occupied. Always. We shall never lack for silliness. Oh, true that, true that. But anywho, uh, let's not dilly-dally because I'm sure everyone here has things to do. Not really. <laughs> Silver, what about you? I, I'm sure you have things to do. Things to do, places to go, people to see, myself to blow up. Ah, yes. True. That. I can help with that last one. <laughs> Where am I? Uh, Ooh, we got, we're going back down to DEFCON 4, baby. Ooh, uh, we're going to slow it down now. Uh, oh, no. Please don't blow up my guests. Welcome to Trump's America. We always at DEFCON 4. Oh, yeah. On on a side tangent, right? I, I, I saw a video of Obama going to a coffee store and people around the New York area were cheering for him. Like, what? Because <laughs> for all the strengths and weaknesses, I think people are acknowledging he had a presidency without scandal. He had a presidency that seemed to expand and respect people. And, well, it's, well, I understand that folks don't always agree with his policies. I think he treated folks with mutual respect. Mm -hmm. I think he set a standard of quality of character and, Right now, with every day seems to be a new news flash that makes me scared, I miss that quality of character. Yeah, but anywho, we're not a politics show. I, I think if you want to hear a political show, listen to our friend, uh, Alpha Brony. He has a politic podcast, I think. But anywho, since we have a hippogriff on the show, let's start off with the hippogriff in the movie. Oh yes, I'm less special now. I am no longer a precious snowflake. Well, I, I wouldn't say that, Silver, because uh, the new character, Stratus Sky Ranger, wow, even his name is awesome, 
uh, is the newest character in the My Little Pony movie. And he is a hippogriff. Um, say what now? From what I can see here, he, he doesn't really look like a hippogriff. Except for the front talons. But besides that, he doesn't have the futuristic of a hippogriff. It's hard to say, because have you ever seen a hippogriff in real life? Well, they are mythological creatures, so they don't exist. But from all the media consumption I've seen, saw, or look at, is they have the upper part of an eagle or bird, and the lower half of a horse. A horse's patoot, if you will. Yes. Yes. So, this guy here, he's breaking the rules of character his face or his muzzle see there's something wrong there he has a muzzle horses don't have muzzles sorry um Hippogriffs. birds don't have muzzles yeah and yet i i like that they added sort of a sharp point to the tip of his lips which let's be fair mm. here horses don't have lips either yet we don't call foul when we see ponies talking uh, true that. So there's the implication of his birdish ancestry, his griffinness. Mm-hmm. And so I find him delightfully atypical. I, I This may be an appeal to novelty, but I like the fact that they didn't just recycle the look that's been seen on Harry Potter or uh, other places or Dungeons and Dragons. They made sure, hey, we're going to make this our own. He's more horse than bird, but if he ate a beefcake, oh my. <laughs> well, okay, I, I agree with you on that one there. I can appreciate Hasbro's decision on making a character look totally different from the standard hippogriff. That's including you, Silver. And yeah, um, well, I appreciate it. Do I like it? Uh, I'm going to wait and see because this character here, he looks perfectly fine. It just irks me that he doesn't have the beak part. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get uh, you. I get you. At the same time, I, I I enjoy it. Plus, being a Super Sentai fan, and he's... I just try to envision him doing the poses. Super Sentai! Stranger Stranger! Henshin! Yay! Uh, but why? What do you think, man? I'm, I'm with you. I've I, overall, I enjoy it, but as a, a, a little bit of a small-time mythology buff, it, it's going to irk me to no end for all time that he's a hippogriff with a horse's head. But I do like the little features like the feathers even on his uh, rear horse legs and the slightly uh, larger than... Most other winged creatures for his wings. Most of the, uh, the Griffin. <laughs> oh, and then there's the mane. How fabulous is that mane? <laughs> oh, yeah. That mane is looking fabulous. Rarity approves. Rarity might actually cozy up to him. Oh, gosh. Yeah. But you know what? what? One thing is for certain is that this character, once he's out in theaters and once he's out in the wild... People are going to latch on to him and really like him, I think. Or hate him, depending on which one you prefer. Um, but anywho, well, from one toy to another, it seems that the Guardian of Harmony toy line is getting movie characters now? Yes. Yeah. Many, many characters. So many characters. And they're jet planes. What? I had a friend of mine talk to me about this and he says, like, they're appealing to the boys in terms of how their toys are looking now. It's more boyish in team. So you have, um, who's that one? Storm, is it? Storm Sky something. I, I forgot his name. Her name. Well, with the, the Edgelord Unicorn. She has a jet pilot something. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to describe. It looks kind of like some sort of small powered flying jet ski sort of thing almost. I'll challenge the idea that it's becoming more boyish. I describe it as simply being more energetic. My Little Pony has always been a bit... Hmm, they always Blimey. try to appeal to the gentleness. There's always pastels and tea parties and cakes. Now we're like, yeah, these ponies can kick ass! Kick ass! 
And I think people often associate that with boys, but I think it's more accurate now to say, yeah, girls like that stuff too. It's just we stop, we stop pretending it's only one way. I agree with you there too. And yeah, um, for now, uh, who knows? Like this, hmm. okay, let's not pretend. My Little Pony has always been a show about selling toys. Indeed. And with the movie coming out this year, they are really pushing that idea to the fullest. Oh boy, howdy. Yep, I don't mind them. But in all honesty, will I buy the Guardian of Harmony toy line? Probably not. But will I buy the fan series? Oh hell yeah, that's what I'm gonna buy. Look at that Celestia. Look at that Storm King. L- look at that vinyl. Like, those are just awesome. Definitely that vinyl. Yeah. And yet, you know who's not in the Guardians of Harmony line at all? Which I find fascinating. Who? Princess Cadence. Ah. There's no, oh, yeah. There's no love for her. <laughs> well, for now, for now, we, we don't even know what their plan is. I mean, how do I put this? Like, the recent New York Toy Fair, they're focusing more on the movie. So, yeah, let's stick with that for now. But with the, what shall we call this, um, with the other characters, because um, recently they added um, Daring Do, they added Applejack in her action pose. With the hat? And other mores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, AJ with a hat. Gosh. AJ with a hat, who knew it would be so novel? I know, but it makes her character pop. You know, remember back in the days when you wanted Pony plush and they don't come with hats? That's sad, especially if you want to buy Applejack. Sadness surrounds us. Yeah, true that. But there's even more sadness now. It seems that a few toy company has lost the license to produce more pony stuff. Um, Funrise drops plush. Funko has nothing new. Uh, let's see. I think a few other companies stated that they're not doing anything. So for you guys who don't know who Funrise is, they're the pony plush manufacturer who created the spaghetti main ponies. Remember them? They're all over the Walmart, Target. What other toy company are available? Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Walmart, yes. So them too, yeah. Silver, do you have one of those? Actually, a friend did get me a Rainbow Dash. Uh, she just happened to be in line and saw them on the stand. She's like, oh, my friend really likes this show. There you go. By a, sim- <laughs> by a similar note, I have the full Guardians of Harmony line. I didn't buy a single one. My friend said I was the easiest person to shop for at Christmas. <laughs> uh, I wish I have Christmas friends. <laughs> that sounds like oh, they're well. only my friends at Christmas. We'll be your buds <laughs> just buy us stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, so, sad. Still, still. so sad. Just the silver. But still, it seems that we're getting less toys now but it doesn't mean that we're not getting any more because from the recent toy fair that was in the states we are getting a lot but nothing new from our favorite vendors like funko or if you're a fan of the funrise funrise i guess well i suppose it's give and take we're getting better toys that well okay if you're not a fan of brushables then guardians of harmony is giving toys that have been long awaited so it's you close the door, you open a window. I'm true that. But, Twy, what about you, man? You've been quiet. Uh, yeah, it's, the toys aren't something that's really common down here. Uh, not too many stores stock uh, anything interesting like the Funko stuff. And half of it is usually too expensive for someone like me to buy anyway. But usually, from what I do remember, uh, for the Funko stuff, usually that they're, they're at a game shop. Um, What was the popular brand down there? EB Games, was it? Yeah, EB Games. Yeah, I, I thought they stocked this kind of things. Uh, sometimes they did stock the mystery mini series, which I have a few of. And oh. if they, if I ever go there and see any of the uh, other Funko <laughs> stuff, I'll probably grab some, but, uh, some of it. But I don't get around to those shops too often. Yeah, understandable, understandable. But you know what, me toys? There's that Pinkie Pie My Size Pony. <laughs> that thing st- disturbs me. 
<laughs> oh, or the robot Twilight Sparkle that's coming out. Oh, yeah, that too, that too. Okay, that sounds I'm interesting. Not... What's that in the news list? Uh, because it's creepy. <laughs> but now, let me try and find it for you. Um, just think, just think Teddy Ruxpin's got some competition for creepiest toy. <laughs> oh god, no, Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, anywho, uh, here we go. Uh, clicking in, in the, whatchamacallit, chat, and I'll try and put it in the show notes. Yes. So yeah, um, you remember those funny mold things that was in the commercials when you watch the ponies? Yeah, uh, they seem to be creating a pony version of it now. Yay! Oh god, it's horrifying. Uh, Silver, you brought it up. What do you think? Well, funny thing, I haven't even watched the video in its entirety, but the fact that it talks in response to touch, it has this uncanny valley element to it. You see, mm-hmm. you see it moving, you see the, the fur skin, whatever it is, folding and wrinkling as, as it moves its head. It's just like, what foul bit spawned this being? <laughs> What crime have we committed that the heavens would condemn us? Marketing. Heresy. Heresy, I say. Burn it in the name of the god emperor. Oh, no. Where is your machine (laughs) god now? (laughs) Uh, But in all honesty, right, um, if you do remember the commercials, I I think they're funny malls or funny malls. I forgot. But they were in the commercials, if you do watch it on TV or a live stream, um, and they have commercials about these toys. I find them fascinating, and I've thought to myself, huh, I wonder when Hasbro's going to make a pony version of this. And lo and behold, they did it here for the movie, which kind of makes sense now. It's all the more terrifying. Just when you think Twilight Gorn can't drive people to greater madness, she succeeds. I kind of want to buy one for my friends for their birthday. <laughs> It'd be the no, best of the worst gag gifts. You'd have uh, fewer friends by day's end, I'm sure. Uh, I'm king I mean, down they, here, so it doesn't matter. I mean, all they got to do is wake up and see that thing staring at them from a shelf and be like, yeah, no, it's gone. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. But anywho, before we continue on... Here comes a new challenger! Hey there, Will. Hello, people. How are you all doing today? Fine, fine. So, um, I'm guessing work took a toll on you? Oh well, you know, third shift, night shift, doing, doing the doing the work no one else wants to do. Yeah, the graveyard shift is never fun. The graveyard shift is never fun. But welcome to the show. Welcome to the fifth year of the show, to be exact. This is the day where dreams and nightmare happened. Mm, five year anniversary. Yep. If I had a kid, he'll be five years old right now. Ah, oh, cool. Five year olds. Oh. <laughs> uh. uh. <laughs> Slightly less fun than the MBS show. You know, it's... <laughs> True that. <laughs> uh, but anywho, talking about slightly less fun, Starlight Glimmer, folks. <laughs> oh, yeah, Starlight Glimmer, apparently rumored to be... I'll let someone else take it away. I won't spoil the yeah. fun. <laughs> uh, but anywho, so with toys, you have certain characters that don't make sense being in them. Uh, you guys remember the... Uh, gorilla aliens or the praying mantis aliens? Yeah. Praying mantis aliens. Praying mantis the toys. aliens. Yeah, the toys like the rhino aliens and whatnot. The xenomorph, I think, was they called. Yeah, the xenomorphs. Oh, 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 oh. That, that where the kids transform into animals. <laughs> that too. <laughs> okay, that's wait, animals. That's animorphs. I thought we were talking like the biker mice from Mars here or something. And when you said xenomorphs, I was picturing face huggers, which is definitely not for My Little Pony, or children no. in general. <laughs> oh. uh, Depends where you grow up. The last time a kid and, a, and an alien got together, that was Alien vs. Predator 2, and that movie was terrible. <laughs> oh, God, I know. Oh, God, I know. But still, um, running on the same concept of uh, things are, well, kind of strange, we got Starlight Glimmer. Is she in the movie? Because it seems that a toy of the My Little Pony movie has Starlight Glimmer in it. We got no idea how this is. Like, is she in the movie or not? Yeah, she'll probably well, just make a cameo role. I bet you anything. <laughs> well, how how nervous are we about spoilers? Um. Well, 
bit, but as for now, I'm just taking everything under rumors. Well, okay, because I have the rumored synopsis. Wait, there's a rumored synopsis? Yeah. Let's see here. Ooh. How far is your... Oh, well, if you need me to tantalize, I can still take my Barry Whites. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's see here. Uh, Searching through the old... I want to be able to quote it verbatim, but the, the basic summary, the Storm King steals all the magic from Equestria. And Twilight and friends are going to have to venture outside of Equestria to hunt him down and reclaim their, uh, reclaim the magic for Equestria. Therefore, if Starlight does appear in the movie, I'm going to guess that getting her magic zapped away probably knocks her out of commission pretty good. Let's see here. Here's the summary. The herd of brave ponies comes eye to eye with their biggest enemy. The mischievous Storm Creek... Storm King decides to steal all of the magic from their home kingdom of Equestria. In order to save it, the brave heroes have to set out on a journey full of adventures. They will make new friends like sea ponies or good pirates, and will live through many emotional and funny turn of events as they once again prove that friendship is magic. Huh. Ah. Oh, well, not only does the Storm King look like Tarek 2.0, he actually just repeats the same process. I shall steal your magic! <laughs> But here's the biggest difference, man. Here's the biggest difference. He succeeds. Oh, yeah. He he does the smart thing. And it's just like, I have your magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, boys. Technically, T-Rex succeeded. Technically. Well, but he he was dumb enough to stay and gloat. Oh. This guy, he took it and, yoink, I'm out of here. Although what I find funny is that they say this is their biggest enemy, but then they follow that up with the adjective mischievous. No! No, that doesn't work. Just let's update that adjective to the the menacing, the dangerous, the malignant. <laughs> the gastrointestinal. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, boy. He's, he's just a big windbag. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys. But you know what? I have this theory. I, I'm not 100% sure it's true or not, but here's my theory. Before the movie starts or whatever it is, Starlight notices there's a mirror in the library. And she asked Twilight, Hey, Twilight, what's this mirror? Why is it glowing and stuff? And Twilight explains that, Oh, this mirror here? Ah, it's nothing really. It just brings you to another dimension. Oh, really now? Can I, you know, go? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Let me just write a message to a friend on the book. Da, 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 da. And then, yeah, go ahead. And that's where you get the Starlight Glamour Equestria Gulmini. Or it just turns out that in the other world, like, Starlight Glimmer's like some foreign exchange student or some haphazard thing. Nope, I'm not accepting that uh, hit cannon of yours. I'm going with mine. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Sunset Shimmer is uh, a sushi chef. Yay! <laughs> wait, maybe... Oh, wait, that explains it! She's a sushi chef! That explains where she's able to get the money to live on her own. And how yeah. she defeated the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Sunset Shimmer oh. um, Shooby Doo, you're gonna be in Shooby Doo Sushi. <laughs> uh, well, talking about Sunset Shimmer, a guy on the Twitters he tweeted to Hasbro asking, uh, "What should we expect f- for the Equestria Girl special, like Star at Glimmer and new person at the Toy Fair?" It's an Ask Hasbro kind of deal where Hasbro. Just stated out stuff like, hey, you got something for us? Do use the hashtag as Hasbro and we'll answer it. So, um, Hasbro being Hasbro answered the guy and said, stay tuned to find out. Our special will be airing this summer on Netflix in the US of A. So anywho, yeah, the three Equestria Girl special that we've been wanting to, well, personally for me, I've been dying to see more Sunset because Sunset's best waifu. So he's coming out on Netflix, that's awesome. And yeah, it's going to be, I hope it's going to be an hour long, but now they mentioned it's going to be 22 minutes long. So yeah, sad, but still we get more. I can't wait. I absolutely love Equestria Girls. <laughs> Same here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm ambivalent, but I'm actually wondering if they're going to continue, like, if, are these just going to be standalone or are they going to be, all, are all three going to be connected in some way? I, I do hope that at least they're partially connected, you know, like they they reference one another, 
So at least it's in continuity with Equestria goals. But Silver, what do you think? Well, uh, once again, I think I saw a synopsis just last night uh, on Equestria Daily uh, talking about how they were just coming back from Camp Everfree, but then they had to raise money to fix the school because that darn stallion statue is still uh, in pieces. And so, oh, really? No. And so that's why we are like, whoops. So they're going to do a bunch of odd jobs, including a car wash, which I think, okay, great. How many car wash art pieces are we going to see from the fan? <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, uh, hey if know, Chowder can he, do a car wash, these guys can do a car wash. Hey, Chowder did it awesomely. If you remember that, that was awesome. Wait a minute. This will be, this will be uh, twice in some children's cartoon. Tara Strong has been in a car wash for raising money. <laughs> Go into uh, okay. the car wash. Okay, to uh, get people up to date with what we're talking about, there's a cartoon show on the Cartoon Network called Chowder. And said episode has the main characters uh, having money problems. And they mentioned that, oh no, if we have money problems, we don't have any money for animation. And it cuts off to the voice actors, for real. <laughs> and the voice actors, all of them, raise money by doing car wash. And they got money for the animation back. Yay. That's all the other Which is very back. meta. Yeah. Yeah. Chowder was nothing but meta jokes constantly. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, this will be interesting. But I-, I wonder how they're going to tell the episode. And that will be cool. That will be cool. Like I said, I do hope Starlight will be there. It will be cool. She'll be cool to be there. Maybe she'll just be in like the background. Oh, I know. Technically, since she's like even older than, well, someone. Actually, you know what? They've never really said ages. It's just kind of funny if she's one of the people they have to wash a car for. She's like, make it snappy. <laughs> oh, that's just bad. I'm just but hoping for a sneak peek of Human Sunset, the original Human Sunset. Oh, oh we all yeah, know, we all know that uh, the original Sunset was a bad girl to the bone. Met up with her. Cracked open her skull, ate her brains, and took her place. <laughs> what? Oddly specific. <laughs> Will, is this something that you need to tell us? Speaking from experience today, mate. <laughs> Are you the real Will I? <laughs> they know too much. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but anywho, talking about knowing too much, uh, there was a panel at the Toy Fair, and I think it was Megan who's revealed certain things that we wanted to know for a long time now. Almost seven years probably. Oh, yes. Yeah, like Rainbow Dash's parents. Oh! Applejack's parents. Ooh! Parents, finally! Yeah. So the question is, is she the Batmare? <laughs> Not sure, but... Names do exist. Names do exist. My parents replied to be dead. <laughs> uh, exactly. Anywho, I'm just going to start off with Rainbow Dash first. So, <clears throat> um, Rainbow Dash's parents' names are Wind Whistler and Blow Hot Hoof. I'm sorry. Hmm. That's not Wind Whistler. That. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of the wrong parent pair. This kind of confirms right off the bat that Rainbow Blaze is not her papa. Yeah. Like, what? Brother, maybe? Older brother? Probably. Well, ah, oh, no! Cousin? She's the, she's the only member of the main six who doesn't have a sibling at this point. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm with Silver with this one. I want Rainbow to be an only child, so she doesn't really know or really appreciate the brother-sister dynamic. And that's why she agreed to become uh, Scootaloo's older sister. Because she hasn't experienced it. Or maybe just who we think Rainbow Blaze is, is uh, Bo Hot Hoof. No. Because they, they, I mean, it it, it, in his name there, Bo <laughs> is in there, Rainbow. Oh, yeah. Probably. No, like, I believe yeah, uh, the, person, uh, the Pegasus we know as uh, Rainbow Blaze was confirmed not to be uh, Rainbow's dad or anything like that. A while ago. Yeah. But that was from the character designer. Um, I think Silver mentioned it on the show once where... Um, Silver, what did you mention? Well, yes. Uh, the show designer did indeed confer, did say that is not intended to be her father. 
we have not seen her father, uh, be on the lookout that if he comes back, if we do see him, he might look very different. And, well, lo and behold. But uh, even the Interplay card that lists him as a character, and they, the cards usually work in tandem with the show pretty closely. I wouldn't call mm-hmm. them canonical, but they're a pretty safe bet. Uh, they called him Rainbow Blaze the Dashing Mentor, where he boasts that he taught Rainbow Dash everything she knows about flying. So I will go with Cousin. I will go with maybe a retired Wonderbolt who took her under his wing at flight camp. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. uh, well, I can only imagine the the number of jokes people will make. Who's the real father? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, no. Oh, great. Wait, Rainbow um, Dash's parents on Mari. This will be great. Oh, God. Jerry, yeah, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Oh gosh, but still, yeah, I do agree with that. Like that sounds plausible. That except that last part, uh, that, that last part is not possible at all. Uh, and on to the next pony, Applejack. Yeah, so she has parents, and well, that was that was always a given, Norman. I mean, she exists, therefore she has parents. Unless this, yeah, yeah, true, true. unless we're going by G one standards, where children ponies are birthed from a mirror. That was an interesting. That was an interesting generation. Yeah, try try explaining that to kids. Oh yeah, you popped out of a mirror. Reflect on that. Uh, but anywho, um, so for Applejack's dad, his name is Bright Mac, and her mom. <laughs> uh the fandom's going to go nuts with this one. Pear butter. Pear butter. Yep, with old grand pear. <laughs> Well, you know, it is it is quite the pairing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there is a small small synopsis of this one. Um, Applejack's mom sings a Romeo and Juliet style song, how she fell in love in a flashback. So season seven confirmed to be confirmed to have Applejack's parents in an episode. Mm. But is it a flashback within a flashback? Or are they alive? Yeah. We shall discover yeah. these answers and more! You'll see how many yeah. head cannons are destroyed. Uh, All confirmed. <laughs> hey, you know, after the great changeling head cannon destruction at the end of season uh, six, I'm pretty sure we can survive anything remaining. True that. Uh, but still, um, Silver, what do you think, man? Like, this is a bombshell. Well... I heard a sudden sound as millions of head cannons cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. <laughs> oh, I, I used that same joke on this show back when we were talking about season six, buddy. <laughs> yes, but I did it in a sexier voice. Okay, fine. I'll give you that. But only that! Oh, you're going to give me lots of stuff, baby. You just don't know what you have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I at least expect a dinner and a very nice dance first. You'll get McDonald's and a chicken dance. Chicken McDonald's. <laughs> oh, uh, I heard that Burger King bought Popeyes. Well, th- great. They can double the terribleness. <laughs> but basically, it, it'll be fun to see Applejack's parents. There's Everything about this sounds like a flashback rather than... Uh, Rather than where are they now? Which might make the episode a little bit dark. Oh, dearest, I shall look forward to spending a long and fruitful life with you. Hey, we just had our third kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, let's say it's a Romeo and Juliet style song, and we all know how Romeo and Juliet ended up. Oh, well, they... True, but if you remember that one show, um, what was that? Ah, dang it, I forgot that movie. It's almost akin to Romeo and Juliet, but it has gangsters singing. Oh, West Side Story? Roxanne? Yes, West Side Story. It has a similar tone to uh, Romeo and Juliet, but the female lead did not kill herself. Did, did someone else do it? I haven't seen that movie. No, I haven't seen it I either. I haven't seen it too. I've heard <laughs> it from a, what you would call this um, YouTube video discussing about something. I think it was film theory. Yeah. 
Frame by frame. Yes, that was the show called. But that's besides the point. But still, we'll see how it goes. As for right now, in this current situation, there's so many what ifs and n. So, my prediction here is either one of two things. And by saying that, I could be both right and wrong. Uh, one is a flashback from Granny Smith with old grandpair talking about the olden days. Or we have the parents come back and Apple Bloom or just any one of the main six ask how they met. Or, and this will be fun, Applejack will just point saying, what are you talking about? My parents have always been right over yonder, y'all. Camera pans over and they're just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> They've always been just screen left this entire time. <laughs> oh, you you want to know something? Like, remember in season one where Twilight was there doing, well, her job? And remember the Apple gathering? Yeah. Oh, every Apple gathering. They're there. <laughs> they're there. They're just not acknowledged. <laughs> uh, but anywho, on to the last one on the news. And the news for this one is rather... Depressing for me. Uh, someone tweeted out to John and asked, are you going to be on the show next season for season 7? And he said he don't think so. And by mean John, it's John DeLancey. I thought it was John Lennon. I know. <laughs> okay, if you somehow got John Lennon to tweet, I am both impressed <laughs> and terrified. <laughs> Necromancy is a hell of a thing. Yeah, you know, you know how it's, uh, there's necro posting on forums? This is necro tweeting. I channel tweets from Beyond the Dead, and let me say, they're very much lolling at us right now. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I'm about to kill Norman. My jokes are killing Norman. I guess we have to practice some more necromancy then to keep the show going. Quick! Quick, Silver, you have to be not funny. Channel every single bit of Carlos Mencia you can. Hi, I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> we broke Norman. I think we broke him, yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm waiting for Norman to work it out of his system. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Technical difficulties. Well, talking about sponsors, we have the Patreon. Uh, I would like to take this time for me to recover to say a big thank you to Twilight Genesis, Lurker Cat, and also one of our newest Patreon guys, uh, Peter Zabor. This guy has supported me on the Patreon, and thank you for your support. And for Peter, a message to you. We'll pick one and we'll do a discussion next month. I hope you'll enjoy what we pick because I got no <laughs> idea how we're going to do this because with me and on a laughing fit, uh, I hope I survive. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but anyway, thank you very much, people. Thank you for the support. And if you want to support us too, you can do it at patreon.com slash the MBS show where we do this thing for fun. Uh, Silver. Uh, back and back on to the news. Yeah, the, the spirits uh, of Abbott and Costello are tweeting at you. Pull it together, Norman. <laughs> I'll try. So anyway, um, John Hancy not being in the show. I call Poppycock. That's my world. <laughs> well, there's no need for that kind of language, sir. Hello? <laughs> You're going to a friend, the Stratus Skyguard Ranger. <laughs> oh no! But still, like no Discord in season seven, really? Eh, it happens. Eh, I guess. But oh well. Um, let's. I'm, I'm going to go round table with this one, starting with Silver. What do you think, man? Like for reals? I'm, I'm listening in the distance for KP's scream. <laughs> She'd be like, uh, the cries uh, will sound delicious. <laughs> Just feed me your age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. Really mm, bad but that's... Dungeons and Dragons movie. Always. <laughs> Heck, if I, if I could swing it, I'd do that little goose call the one heroine does. I'm not! 
<laughs> but, I mean, there's no rule that he has to be in every season. Granted, he has been since season two. I mean, usually just one episode in season three. What was it? Two episodes in seasons four? I'm double checking now. And, uh, besides his first appearance, um, in season three, he appeared three times. Um, twice as a background and once as a appearing character, uh, focused and talking. In season four, he appeared about, what, two, three, six times. Nice. Five, four, and six, three times. Okay, that's a lot of numbers. I feel like we're talking about Star Wars arcs now. I like the first three. You mean the prequels? No, the original three. Oh, you mean the four through six? Yes, the four through six that are really one through three, but now we're at seven through nine. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Don't but get him started on the expanded universe. <laughs> which no longer exists, but it's rekindling. Oh, no. But <laughs> basically, he's been part of every season, but that's not a requirement. My question is, mm -hmm. he's been the, a marvelous foil for Fluttershy. Uh, at pushing mm -hmm. her to be more responsible. So unless Zephyr Breeze makes a return and needs a little bit more tough love, Fluttershy is going to need a new uh, pony to counsel or contrast. Maybe she has to help out Dash. That would be something. I mean, they've been friends for an extremely long time, and so she could definitely play the close friend slash mm, tough love angle. Probably. Mm -hmm. Although she makes Dash cry again. I don't know if fans will be able to handle it. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, Wills, what about you, man? Hmm, well, I'm a little disappointed, but then again, uh, he could just be, you know, say, saying one thing and totally me. He's saying, I don't think so. That doesn't mean he doesn't know so, but who, who knows? It's, it's John Delancey. He could, he, his, his right hand can be saying one thing and his left hand can be, you know, performing a magic trick, so who knows? Um, am I gonna be disappointed? Yeah, a little bit. You know what? I'm just I'm happy with more more show. Okay, okay. Yeah. And why? What about you, man? I'm going to call shenanigans. I don't think Discord is a character that they're likely to completely pull out of a full season. He might be reduced to only one or two episodes because he has sort of been go having less episodes as each season's gone by from season four. But I I don't think they'll pull a big name character like Discord from a whole season's worth of episodes. Unless they have a half season like season three, then maybe I could see them pulling Discord out. But in all honesty, I'm my, my prediction here or what I think here is that the production for season seven is going to be a two parter. Um what I mean by that is we're going to have a break in between. So you'll have thirteen episodes to begin with probably a three-month break, and then uh, on to the other part of the season. And right now, from what I think, probably the first 13 episode will not have any Discord in it, and the later half will have, like season 6, because from episode 1 to 13, or 1 to 12, there were no Discord, and continuing on from that point, they were three Discord episodes. It's possible. Maybe maybe just only the first half has been decided, and the second half hasn't been decided yet. That is possible. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And I'm looking here for another character, Shining Armor, and looking at it, he has been in every season. Yeah, he's been kidnapped or needed to be rescued at least once a season. Uh, true oh. that. True oh my gosh, that. he's the damsel in distress. Oh no. Well, both he and Cadence. Yeah. Oh, who now? Prince Be a wise. Crystal Heart Butt? I don't know, what do they call it? Oh, yeah. Her. Oh, Prince, Princess <laughs> Merchandise. There you go. Princess <laughs> of Merchandise. And now, oh, wow. and now all the Cadence fans are mad again. <laughs> like, I don't, you love All three of them. I don't mean to <laughs> troll, but somehow it just keeps happening. What is, what is this duality within my soul? <laughs> oh, gosh, you. So, season seven, no Discord. I don't think so. Probably he will. We'll just have to wait and see. We just have to wait and see. But other than that, that's the news, guys. Uh, we have been talking for a while now, and it's been a really awesome hour. So, guys, before I 
kind of wrap things up. I like to ask you guys, what has been entertaining you guys this week? Twy, what's been eating up your time? Uh, mostly just uh, watching YouTube and playing some D and D. What version? Fifth edition, the best one. I have not played since second edition. That's how out of date I am. You, you should catch up. Find me a group. <laughs> hey, Norman, you were looking for people to play, right? Mm, true, true. Well, I will talk about that later because right now I have something in mind I want to talk, but we'll see, we'll see. So, the Indian YouTube. What about you, Silver? Well, I am mostly entertained by the ever-present pressure of work combined with creating new videos followed by an existential crisis of despair brought on by the fact that I just can't seem to catch up no matter how hard I try and everyone is so demanding and I feel so alone. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you have us. Oh. You have us. Also, Q-Ranger. Oh, Q-Ranger. Mm, Q-Ranger. Yep. No, not, not, not Q-Ranger. That's, that's much older. Q-Ranger. Q-Ranger? Which one's that? It's the it's the current Sentai that's ongoing. There are only two episodes into the season, but it's been a lot of fun. Also, I don't know why, but I am addicted to the song Moto Kimi o Shieba, which I'm mispronouncing terribly. I'm sorry, Japan, please don't hate me. Not like the <laughs> not like the Cadence fans hate me now. But it I don't understand why, but for some reason Japanese songs just sound more happy and optimistic than the current American crop. So even though I don't know what the heck they're saying, I do know they're a lot more fun at parties. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I've been there before. Like, I remember back in the days when my playlist was full of Japanese anime songs, and I don't understand it, but I highly enjoy it. Is that all, Silver? Well, what can I say? It's been... <laughs> I don't enjoy a lot of free time, so I get very sad. It's a sad. Uh, you, you should try and find some free time if when possible. But you do watch movies every week, right? And not every week. They're, we're giving it a pass this weekend. What's up for this week? Mm, no movies, I can tell you that. Uh, okay. uh, I know Logan is next weekend, I believe. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for that one, too. Mm. I hear Patrick Stewart says a curse word. Yes. Ooh, very naughty. He say procreate. Oh, but oh, but on that topic, I did also just last night watch a bunch of the X Men, E X Men. Hmm? You, Which one is that? Oh, you have not seen this. This is fantastic. It's a, a Jeff Holmes show. He basically ha- plays Professor Xavier, firing each of the X Men because they're so ludicrous. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, I've, I've seen some, <laughs> uh, like Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think my favorite was uh, Ice Man, where it's like. Look, if I want someone inconveniencing, I'll have Seal serenade from the sidelines. And, <laughs> and then he just starts doing this absurd impression as Iceman tries to justify his existence. <laughs> All righty then. Hey, boy, I got me right to the road. I mean, he's doing an awful job, but at least I can sing it. Oh, good golly. <laughs> Yeah. What about you, Wills? <laughs> well, uh, but basically doing nothing but work in overtime. So when I do have free time, uh, what I've been doing is basically spending it, uh, writing, uh, working on art assets for a video I'm trying to make, uh, and playing Dragon's Dogma, Civilization V, and while at work, since all I do is fold laundry for eight straight hours, I've been catching up on all the anime I've missed. So what enemies are doing? Oh, um, Ray Zero I just started on, um, just caught up with the new one of the, uh, uh, Miss Kobayashi's, uh, Dragon Maid, which is adorable and hilarious. I recommend it if you, if you like adorable comedy, this is it. Oh, talking about, oh, wow. <laughs> like, we don't script this, folks. Uh, I'm also watching uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. <laughs> it's really cute. It's just freaking adorable. And, and. Slice of life, I would say. Slice of life, adorable, and it's comedy. The characters write the comedy itself. I've not, I've mm-hmm. not had this much fun with a slice of life since a while. I think. Ponies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that, yeah. Yeah. There we go. We'll go with that. 
Yeah, it, it's not 2D part of ponies. It's standard anime, well, I won't say schlock, but it's, it has its anime tropes in here. But in all honesty, the character, like Will says, the character writes himself because, uh, I won't say spoilers, but more of a synopsis. One of the main characters here is a dragon who transforms herself into adult girl and she wants to pay a debt to one of the human. I, I think Yeah, Miss Kobayashi basically like apparently saved her life. It's never it hasn't yet been said how she saved her life, but just because uh she did, she's like, I must repay my life debt to you. It's like, okay, you'll be my living mate. Alright. What's a maid? <laughs> so light at, yeah, no. light at, is she a Wookiee? I mean, she, she looks like a dragon with a triple A cup and it's like... Uh, oh, no, like no, 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 that's one of the jokes. Uh, that's actually one of the jokes. She asks, what cup size are you? D for dragon. Hey. Yeah, it's, it's got very tongue-in-cheek humor like that. Yeah. Although, if you think that's crazy, you should see what Quetzalcoatl looks like. <laughs> Uh, let's not spoil. If you guys want to watch it, it's on Country Roll. We're not sponsored. Please sponsor us, Country Roll. Let's just say that Quetzalcoatl is rated F for Feathered Dragon. Mm. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, but is that all? A wheels? Um, yeah. Um, if any of you have ever played Dragon's Dogma, I say it's a great game to pass your time on. And uh, other than the anime and working on the projects, um, oh, that reminds me. After we're done, Silver, I have something to share with you. <laughs> oh my! All righty then. And as for me, what's been eating up my week? Besides the time I play Overwatch and Payday, do um just editing the show and well, watching a few shows here and there. Um, shows that I've been watching, like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, that's one. Um, Steven Universe, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, when it's out. And what else? Oh, yes. The 19, I think it's the early 2000 version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders, that OVA that came out Ooh. a while ago. I, I thought about, you know, catching up with that since I like JoJo, and I heard someone said that the original, um, ah, yes, 1993 version of Jojo was different. So I thought, you know, I might as well catch up with it, see how it stacks against the newer version. And you know what? It's not bad. It's hard to put this. Like, if you remember, um, Bubblegum Crisis and other late Japanese animes, it has that feel. How do I even want to describe Jojo, the classic Jojo? It's interesting. It's entertaining. It's different from its newer counterpart. Um, besides being 13 episodes long, <clears throat> this one feels more uh, straight to the point with some parts of his story. Jojo is still Jojo. Um, it's fun. Other than that, I don't know how to describe it. It's just fun. Like, if you're interested, if you're a big fan of Jojo, I would just say go watch the 93 version of Stardust Crusaders. It's fun. Other than that, what else has been eating my time besides fan fiction and editing? Hmm. I don't know. Like, next week I'm going to try and watch Logan. So that's fun. And I think that's about it, really. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. For me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. And Wills, where can they find you, man? If you people want to find my work, you can find me at W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N on YouTube, DeviantArt, and on Film Fiction. All righty then. And Silver, where can they find you? Just turn around. Haha, I made you look. Oh, no. You can find me on the YouTubes under Silver Quill, on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill, and on the Twitters at, again, MLP Silver Quill. And keep an eye on Equestria Daily. I post comic reviews every Wednesday. Ah, and those are reviews for the latest and greatest, right? Oh, the, usually the latest when they come out, but also look backs at, at what we've seen before. Hey, you just covered 51 recently, didn't you? 
Yes, we just started the brand new arc with the Edgelord Shadowlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, he's not a red and black uh, go see with a gun yet. He's not that edgy yet. Oh, uh, no. He he doesn't have a skull mask on and wears a black robe and says, Die, die, die. Hey, I played that guy. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I just I teleported right in front of a sniper's barrel. It's like <laughs> that has our oh my head. <laughs> Try playing the game with zero percent cooldowns. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> tracers become impossible. <laughs> no, Anna becomes impossible. Zarya becomes impossible. Hey, <laughs> it's always impossible. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Uh... Is that all? Isn't that enough? Oh, who knows? Probably catch you on the uh, Patreons or whatever it is you have. Oh, yes, I do indeed have a Patreon under Silver Quill where you can support my After the Fact videos. Ah, yay. Awesome. Can't wait for the next one. So, uh, next up is Twy. What about you, man? Oh, boy, my favorite part. You can find me on Twitter under at midnight underscore pint. Find me on Film Fiction and DeviantArt under Twilight Genesis. Facebook as Double Pint Productions and YouTube as Two Pints Please. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and, and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVerLive.com. And also please subscribe to our latest endeavor, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you have me, Silver, and Sapphire Heart Songs, talking about the MLB cartoon series, comic books, movies, and other random things. Like, I want to do Kung Pao. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You may call me Betty. <laughs> Any mini money mo. I wonder where my rubber glove will go. <laughs> yes, I think I found the perfect group. Yay! <laughs> I need gopher chucks. Wheel, 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 wheel. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> oh. Yeah. One more thing I remember I just remember What entertained my week Yu-Gi-Oh The movie Oh gosh Oh That movie. The abridged version Or the regular version The Dark Side Something 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 That newest Side one Dimension. Yeah Dark Side Dimension Yeah that newest one Oh god The bromance between Yugi And the Pharaoh And Kaiba And the Pharaoh Is strong <laughs> But anywho Please do subscribe for us For silliness there so anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. I am Will Eisen. And I'm the drunkard, Twilight Genesis. No, you're not. You've been clean for this year. Shh, they're not supposed to know that. <laughs> you ruined my hey. image. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next time. With another five more years. Catch ya. Adios. Hello. Cheers. Cheers.